Over centuries, the only way of visualizing interior structures of the human body were drawings like the famous ones of Leonardo da Vinci. His models were cadavers. Nowadays, in the age of computers, we are able to create computerized models of the living body, a virtual body that we can explore arbitrarily. All that began a hundred years ago when Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, professor of physics at the University of Würzburg, Germany, discovered x-rays. This movie shows, using state-of-the-art computerized volume visualization methods, some of the highlights of the development of medical imaging. Röntgen sent his x-rays through the body, here represented as a 3D reconstruction of a corpse. They created shadow images of interior structures. Several decades after his discovery, X-ray images still looked like the early image of Mrs. Röntgen's hand shown here. Quality has of course improved and thus X-ray imaging has become a principal method for the diagnosis of diseases of all parts of the human body. About 70 years after Röntgen's discovery, Godfrey Hounsfield invented computer tomography. With the help of a computer, planar projections from different directions were used to compute an overlay-free cross-sectional image, whose contrast and spatial resolution could be improved to a degree that revolutionized medical imaging. While computer tomography is still based on ionizing x-rays, the new technology of magnetic resonance imaging, invented some years later, is, as far as we know, harmless for the patient. As you can see from these pictures of a brain, it allows, in addition, arbitrary direction of cross-sections and a differentiation of soft tissue not known before. However, are cross-sectional images really the best way of exploring the body? Probably not. Using computer techniques such as those developed at the University of Hamburg, future medical imaging might rather be based on 3D models derived from CT or MRI that can be freely explored. Please join us now for a journey through the virtual body. We enter the head via the nasal cavity and throw ourselves through the foramen magnum get along into the spinal canal, passing the cervical and thoracic vertebrae, direct our view outside, take the elevator further down, turn around, peeping through the intervertebral gaps, and leave the canal between the fourth and fifth vertebrae in a ventral direction. Now we spiral upwards around the vertebral column into the thoracic cavity. And take a look from outside. Beyond mere bone imaging, the new technique of spiral CT delivers high quality soft tissue data. We are now going to navigate through abdominal anatomy thus acquired from a patient with a lesion of the right kidney. We notice the vena cava in blue, the aorta in red. We approach the aorta, look down to the intestines, and leave the abdomen between the left kidney and the vertebral column. We pass again by the right kidney, the liver, and then fly along the intestines which we have already seen from inside and finally discover the pancreas which is shown in pink. As a further step into smaller structures, the virtual body offers novel possibilities of vascular imaging as shown with this aneurysm of the right middle cerebral artery acquired with CT angiography.
Its morphology may be assessed from any direction. But we can also put ourselves onto the tip of a catheter and view the vessel from inside. We enter the anterior cerebral artery. On three scout views, two being maximum intensity projections, the green arrows show the position and the orientation of the viewer on his or her way to the aneurysm. We repeat the scene. We enter the anterior cerebral artery, proceed into the middle cerebral artery, follow the path to the aneurysm, turn around and look back to the orifice we came from. The scene once more. Arrival at the aneurysm. Virtual body models, as the one here derived from MRI, lend themselves to the rehearsal for actual surgery. With a computer mouse, successive layers may be removed to unveil and to remove a tumor. Certainly, realism both of the surgical procedure and the model are subject to improvements. For example, nerves and blood vessels should be included in the model. Even motion such as that of joints can be simulated. This example shows the motion of an ankle joint. A blow-up may illustrate shape and the relation of different anatomic structures. A substantially new quality of virtual body models may be achieved when we link them with an anatomical knowledge base. Then it can be used for anatomical atlases such as the Voxel Man, Atlas of the Skull and Brain. We can inquire information such as anatomical names from any location and we can color mark them. For example, such as these gyri here. And finally, we can ask the computer to make annotations for us on the screen. Here, for example, the right superior frontal gyrus or the right middle frontal gyrus. Both in a 3D image and also the same functionality is in the cross-sectional image as you see on the left side. Now the user is asking for the extent of blood supply areas of arteries. Both on the slice and on the perspective image, the regions of the right middle and right anterior cerebral artery are marked in blue and pink. Switching to functional anatomy, he can learn that the frontal eye field is supplied by the right middle cerebral artery, while the secondary motor area is supplied by both of them. This short clip shows only a few of Foxel Mann's capabilities. Of course, the model can be viewed from any direction. Sample histological images may be called up, and so on. We're back in the room where we started. Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen could not have foreseen which tremendous developments his discovery would cause. Likewise, we are not able to forecast how medical imaging could develop in the next century. Will it look like these pictures on the walls of our room, or will it be completely different? This movie has tried to give some flavor of where the journey could go, at least in the opinion of its authors, which you see here.